so uh, these are the two reference book uh, there's a cochrane handbook of systematic reviews of interventions uh, there's a pdf form also and i think we have shared uh, in the drive folder with you people yeah. although it's it's a very exhaustive book, book but again whenever you are doing something you can refer to this book and again there is another book which is the finding what works in healthcare that is again a standard for systematic review these are the two reference book uh, which you can refer whenever you are doing a systematic review and meta analysis so now since we always in the medical education we want something from known to unknown so although many of you have done this systematic review heard of it or maybe yourself like three people i think they you have done one systematic review one girl did four so what is known like most of us till now we have been conducting the original research so what is the difference between a original research and a systematic review process so if you see original research is when you collect the data on an individual whereas systematic review process is again here you are doing something which is very transparent all the processes which are there in the systematic review whether it is reporting or the standards that is to make things transparent why transparent we we'll learn few biases we know that there are biases and in systematic review there can be biases like we talk of biases in the qualitative research because systematic review if you see it's the qualitative synthesis of the data and when if you do meta analysis after systematic review then it is the quantitative synthesis so wherever the term qualitative comes definitely there is going to be some biases and if you don't accept those biases or if you don't do something to mitigate those biases then your whole process will be you know shifting towards one end so that's why a original research study is one where you do the research on a single unit of subject whereas a systematic review if you say you have to sit and you have to review the already existing literature so if you do things the original research and the systematic review process so in case of a original review original research what do you do you start with the research question similarly here in systematic review also a very important i mean if you ask from me it is the most important part like we do in the original research also most important part of a systematic review process to formulate a clear review question or a research question so both these processes of systematic review and original research is same in this context coming to the data collection process so what you do in the original research basically you collect the data from the individual and that's why you take the ethical clearance also whereas in what you do in the systematic review the unit of study in case of a systematic review is a one single study one single study is the unit of study in case of a systematic review whereas in case of a original research it is the individual human so that is the difference so the study subject or the unit of study is the one article in case of a systematic review where it is it is one individual in case of a original research and since it the study this systematic review involves the seeing the individual database and searching on for the finding in the individual study that's why you don't need a ethical clearance also like for original research since it is done on the human being so you have to go through the process of the institutional research committee review process and then there is a institutional review board or in our uh, institute we call it as a iec which is the ethical clearance body so but in case of a systematic review since it is not done on a human being and the subject the unit of evidence is the single study you don't need to take a at a formal clearance but again you need to register this in the prospero we will talk about that but that registration is different and uh, that whole process of like uh, taking like you take uh, generally takes about approximately 2 to 3 months in getting the ethical clearance also so this way you can save your time in uh, doing a systematic review again this is one advantage of doing a systematic review 
data collection process we have talked about that here you decide about the inclusion and exclusion criteria for selecting an individual whether you are doing a cohort study or doing doing a case control study or whether you are doing a randomized control trial you identify a individual and you lay out a inclusion and exclusion criteria similarly in case of a systematic review again the criteria for selection of study inclusion and exclusion they are also very clearly laid down because generally in a in case of a systematic review it's a team which works so here also in case of a systematic review you have you draft a criteria eligibility criteria of the studies to be included and to be excluded coming to the data extraction you gather the data from the participants in case of original review where in case of a systematic review you extract the key study variable and that variable there uh, we will show you there are various uh, variable which we select like sample size in a particular study what was the effect size or effect size was uh, like outcome was in mean median or it was in proportion like dr vijay was saying like they did a meta analysis on proportion so what is the outcome how it is going to be measured that you uh, define in your systematic review process and then uh, you do the analysis so analysis of a original study you can take help of a spss or r jmovs data in case of a systematic review this analysis process is not always possible so many times you have to stop at the level of data extraction and you do the qualitative synthesis but if you could pull out the result and if you perform the analysis that analysis is known as the meta analysis so meta analysis in case of a original study this statistical analysis will always be there whereas in case of a systematic review process this meta analysis may or may not be possible depending on the kind of study which you get from the literature search and then in case of a original research how do you ensure the quality so basically you follow a protocol you take the precautionary measure at each and every stage like inclusion of the study participants randomizing their uh, number and probably giving the interventions all those step you take care whenever you are doing a original study in case of a systematic review process basically you do the quality appraisal of the individual study so there are various checklists which are available like there is a jbi which is the jona brig institute they also have given one checklist based on each type of study whether it is a case control cohort observational or randomized control trial similarly cochrane also has a uh, this assessment risk of bias assessment tool or the quality appraisal of the study which you have to get it done through the experts so this also we do in case of a systematic review and again result presentation you show your statistical result with confidence interval in case of a systematic review if you can perform a meta analysis then you present your pooled outcome with forest plot interpretation you discuss finding identify limitations and here you synthesize evidence again you highlight gap in your systematic review and meta analysis process so this is just the compare and contrast sort of thing between the original research study and a systematic review process now there are some uh, major types of review so you will also you must have done few uh, reviews like narrative review and then rapid review something like that so uh, now now uh, like till now we have been doing this traditional narrative review and then comes your systematic review which is more systematic and the disciplined sort of process and then again it can be with or without meta analysis then there is something known as the scoping review we'll uh, learn what is this how this scoping review is different from the systematic review and then there is something known as the rapid review so like uh, those of you who are working with the uh, funding agencies many time they request because you know that systematic review process it takes time time means the average time you can say it starts with, uh, between like 6 9 months to one to two year depending on the number of people involved how much time you are giving each day to that process and the topic of your research question because the it depends like how many studies are there when you do the database searching 
So this takes time, systematic review. But again, if you come to the scoping review and the rapid review, the, these are like quicker than the systematic review. So many time funding agency, they request for a scoping review or a rapid review. Of late, we received one request from an organization who has asked for a scoping review. They do not desire for a systematic review and they have asked us for a scoping review for a particular topic. So yes, of course, you should know the difference between these two. Although systematic review is the most stringent and uh, you can say time-taking process and scoping and of course rapid review is uh, quicker than the systematic review. So uh, we just, uh, uh, we will understand these two with one movie analogy. So you can see here like health topic, if I start and we have shared the protocol with you people, I hope many of you have gone through that protocol where the review question or the research question is the effect of probiotics on the mean duration of diarrhea in the children with acute diarrhea. And we are just trying to um, uh, like make it uh, anal analogous to a movie and movies Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse and you want to have a film review of this uh, particular Spider-Man movie. So if you start with the a traditional narrative review process, so what will happen? You summarize the existing research. So you see the journal, you see the thesis, you see the newspaper clips or the articles, and you summarize the existing research on the probiotics and their effect on diarrhea in children. But in this case, your, you will present the specific finding which you like. Because it's the it's the uh, synthesis and there are researcher bias in case of a narrative review. So what is your perception regarding a particular topic, your biases, you summarize in the exist, uh, using that existing research, that is a narrative review. And it does not follow a structured systematic method. You don't uh, go and see so many databases and there's no strict protocol for a narrative review. Similarly, if you just see this analogy with the this movie, Spider-Man, so what is that? Like you go to a movie theater and uh, you just see, you talk, you take the personal opinion through the, about the animation of the movie regarding the storyline, regarding the character development and all those things. And then you take the, write the review. So then comes the systematic review. So systematic review is basically you see databases and you search for all relevant studies which are there. You assess their quality and then you synthesize your result. So it follows a very transparent structured process to provide a comprehensive evidence of the, uh, of the particular review question or the research question. Similarly, in case of a movie, this uh, Spider-Man, how a systematic review can be done? You will go to each of the representative, like you will go to the kids, the adult section, maybe the you will see uh, what is there in the internet and you will see the box office, what was the, how, how was the coverage on the box office on day one. So you try to see many databases and you uh, form this uh, review, like IMD and all, there are many bodies also who review a particular movie and rate it based on some point like 10 point or something like that uh, now what is meta analysis so meta analysis is basically you uh, what you do like we have done um, we have seen the comparison between an original study and a systematic review and meta analysis so in original study you perform a statistical analysis so similarly you extract the data and when you synthesize that data collectively to give one pooled effect that is known as the meta-analysis. So here you tell about the overall effect size and the confidence interval and in the term of a forest plot. So meta-analysis of a movie can be like you combine data from a multiple here like Rotten Tomatoes or the IMD uh, ratings or you calculate the average rating for this um, Spider-Man franchise and then you show an overall measure of its success like uh, all IMD is giving watch how much of rating Metacritic is saying about what Rotten Tomatoes are saying what. So this is the meta-analysis because you are saying here in the form of a, some number or some percentages, some values. So that analysis you do, uh, that is the uh, difference. And now this was regarding the systematic review, narrative review. Coming to the scoping review, scoping review, uh, like I said, it is very much similar to the uh, systematic review but there are some differences so one difference is, is like you don't have to register it in the prospero and but there are like other bodies where you can register is like there is an open science framework osf you can register your scoping reviews 
now now you you might be wondering why to register it so basically there are advantages in registration because by registration you let other people know that you are doing a work on this particular topic we will see the interface of prospero also so scoping reviews again there is one advantage uh, that you don't have to get the uh, quality appraisal of the study so you can include all sort of study and it is not necessary that you will include only studies or you you don't have to send those studies to expert to get a quality appraisal or the risk of bias and again you focuses more on the exploration generally scoping review that never ends with the meta analysis you only uh, like do the review till the qualitative synthesis and not the data synthesis so this is the scoping review and then um, like i said uh, if you like combine this with the movie so you just uh, see the diversity in the character and it is not only related to the spider man you see all other movies also which are there in this uh, genre so all those things you see in case of a scoping review so how scoping review is different from narrative review so narrative review basically you uh, like author give their own perspective basically whatever who whosoever authors like write the narrative review they give their own perspective whereas in case of a scoping review definitely you have a broad re review question it it is not without any question whereas a narrative review you don't have a question and narrative review is highly uh, non systematic and it is very selective you only select those article which you think that it is suiting to your perception the way you perceive a particular phenomena whereas uh, scoping review it is not as stringent as systematic review flexibility is there but again it is very much similar in line with the systematic review outcome in case of a narrative review is generally summary may not cover all relevant studies whereas in case of a scoping review it provide a overview of literature and identifies the literature gap again there is something known as the rapid review so like generally in case of a if you are working with state and like developing sector and uh, like state they have their own research question means they they don't think in the terms of research question but they have some problems and they want to invest money so basically this rapid review is done for the allocation of resources how much money should be uh, you know invested to a particular area whether in the child health or maternal health like neonatal health in bihar like uh, we are thinking of investing not me like there are funders who are thinking of investing in neonatal health and antenatal care so again one of the uh, organization they asked for a rapid review of whether the antenatal care uh, uh, has it got any impact on the neonatal outcome or not so they just want a rapid review because they want to allocate resources for that particular topic so it is quick so it only compiles the evidence and it's a quick evidence public health decision making and it is less exhaustive as compared to systematic and scoping both review so rapid review is again one type of review so we know that review is all again we have learned that it there is a narrative review review there is a rapid review there is a scoping review and there is a systematic review so systematic review if you learn this you can do any type of review because that's the most uh, disciplinary you can say and uh, a lot of stringent criteria and reporting criteria are there with the systematic review and we learn those so rapid review is again so if you know uh, if you can uh, if you want to have us i think we have summarized this so let's leave this so steps i think we will learn this in the systematic review i'm skipping this for now here and uh, we'll see this more in the research question so this was the first uh, no oh, i'm sorry this was the one no i'm sorry this presentation was like we merged these two presentations so i need to start from where
Yes. So now we'll start with the systematic review. So what is a systematic review? Systematic review, like I said, it's a it's a it's a stepwise procedure. So you have to keep reminding yourself regarding these steps. And in this case, more than one step can be occurring at a given point of time. It is not necessary that you have to do one step only at one single point. We'll see this. So the, it starts with formulation of a research question, like we do in the original research also. A research starts with the original uh, research starts with the review question or research question. Here also we start with the review question or research question. And the format is like PICO or PICO. We'll see what are the different breakup of that PICO. Many of you know also already what is a PICO. And in case of a systematic review also, we define this in a very exhaustive manner. Why? Because it defines your inclusion and exclusion criteria of your study. And you need to write it very exhaustively because the other people who are doing the screening procedure, they should know which study to include and which study to exclude. So once you form this research question, then you identify the concept, the broad concept from that research question, you develop your search strategy. So today we'll focus on these two steps to frame a research question, to identify the broad concept, to develop a search strategy and protocol we have shared with you. So I think you know how to form a protocol. And then after forming the protocol, you have to get your protocol registered with the Prospero. And then once it gets registered, then you start your search process, the searching for the database and other activity. You can update your protocol also. Keep on updating your protocol if some new search strategy or some new team member has joined or the previous one they have left you or any change in your processes, you can update your uh, registration process. We will show you how to do that. So these steps are there. Then, they, then you retrieve and uh, you remove the duplicate, which is known as the deduplication processes. And after that, you send those articles for the screening to the other team member and then you screen the title and abstract these each and individual activity we will see and there are breakout room activity so that you will at least perform one activity so that you get to know how this overall process is conducted then you retrieve the full text and then you develop forms for assessing risk of bias I'm just rushing through these uh, points. Okay, so don't feel like I'm going very fast because we each and every point we will discuss in detail. And then we assess the risk of bias. We clean and manage the data. We conduct the qualitative synthesis, which is the systematic review. And if we get to extract the data and if we find similar study, if appropriate, then we conduct the meta-analysis and write the report. And uh, if you if new articles are added, you can update your systematic review also. So now uh, first initiating with a systematic review. So what I what do I mean by this? So I hope that after attending this workshop, every one of you will start at least one systematic review and meta analysis if possible that process. Okay. So how you are going to start? So first you will make a review team. So what is a review team? Like when we planned to start a meta-analysis, we identified people who are the people who will be the part of the team. And since you don't need to be uh, together at one place, there can be people from multiple organizations working differently uh, at different places in different positions because it's, it's something where you don't need to meet uh, physically. Even if you are like chatting and there is a, uh, there's a forum like maybe WhatsApp group or Telegram where you people are interacting with each other. Like for us, we have created one uh, group like for workshop since you have created one group. So similarly, first thing is to you have to establish a review team who should be there. And it depends on the topic also. Like for us, since uh, we also conducted one systematic review on the ADHD and air pollution. So we had to take one psychiatrist also because ADHD is something which is uh, needs a diagnosis of the psychiatrist. So they helped us in formulating the criteria for the studies 
uh, who which studies we should be including so you can have one expert also since we are a community medicine people so if you want to do something on like medicine a topic related to gynecology or maybe anything uh, where you want a clinical specialty to be there or if they will be helpful then you should include those people also in your review team mm -hmm. So uh, you have to establish a review team at least uh, if you have like three, four. Uh, yes, any, any, it is not limited to any department. Anyone can do. Even if you don't feel like including any clinician, if you think that you have got enough uh, knowledge and expertise, then as a community medicine, because in community medicine, you people are exposed to all specialities. So you can go ahead with forming a team only from your specialty also. There is no guideline for these things. It is up to you. So you can have like people, you will see like only two people also have conducted a systematic review and meta-analysis. So yes, you can also include the allied health sciences. It is, it is again, I said that uh, when you register in Prospero, the main person who is the lead PI, you only have to uh, tell about the affiliations of the person who is working there and uh, it is not a stringent criteria but definitely that research background should be there uh, and if there is a diversity that is very very good because other people they can put their insight into the topic and in basically in the selection uh, in the selection of the studies and in formulating the research question also so you can have your uh, team in uh, from allied health sciences also so now coming to the uh, Okay, Dr. Arpan is asking, how do a systematic review in anatomy? Yes, I think uh, Dr. Adil is there in our department and he had conducted three, four systematic review and meta-analysis. So especially yes. topic, uh, I cannot tell you right now, but you can see in, in, in the uh, Cochrane, if you go to the subject, you will find a systematic, we'll show you. If you see the Cochrane database, they have the systematic review subject wise. So if you review that, you will get to know about the topic. And then, yes, th that can be a part of like forensic anatomy. Many things are there that you need to review. Okay. Currently, I, since I'm not a expert in anatomy, so I nothing is clicking. But again, like Dr. Shamshad is saying fem femoral length or maybe some bone or maybe related to some anatomy. Right now, I'm not very clear. So... Uh, please forgive me. So uh, coming to this, uh, managing the bias and uh, conflict of interest of a review team. So now what do you understand by managing bias and conflict of interest of a review team? So in case of a RQ, formulating a review question, before that also, you need to uh, see the biases of people. And like I said, uh, maybe if I, uh, what can be a researcher bias? Like we talk in qualitative uh, data, if I am, I have, I'm, if my study is on, like I have done a lot of observational study or RCT in probiotic and diarrhea. And if I am the one who has started this systematic review, then I may be biased because my whole work, the individual study is on the systematic review. So, or if anybody if whom I have included, if they have got some original studies in a particular topic and you have selected that topic as a systematic review, then you have to definitely convey this in your form that these are the biases, like one of your team member has got a lot of studies or one of your team member is from pharmacological company or if they are funding a particular systematic review, then also you need to acknowledge the bias and you need to try to mitigate that so that you have to manage the bias and conflict of interest of a review team. Now the next is the, uh, you, you have to get that st stakeholder input. Now what is a stakeholder? Many times this stakeholder will not be there with you people. Like I said uh, this time that uh, when you start working in this field, you will get a lot of requests from the funding agencies uh, regarding conduction of a systematic review or a scoping review. So you need to see their vested interest or their, uh, uh, first you need to take their input. So you need to specifically ask from them, what do they want? Like I said, in Bihar, they want a systematic review or the scoping review of the effect of the antenatal care on the neonatal outcome. So what do they want actually that you have to take into account? And the second is you have to manage their bias also. 
when they are providing the input because you don't want like your scoping review to be biased so you should understand and you should know and try to mitigate those biases also and you should come up as an independent reviewer not biased by the stakeholder or the funding agency after that generally you form a review question and you form that topic you develop the protocol you register that protocol before registering the protocol these days you know there is a prisma you know what is a prisma prisma is a preferred reporting guideline for the systematic review and meta analysis we will see that we'll keep on seeing that prisma guidelines and the prisma flow diagram uh, there is a prisma protocol also which is again a checklist based item and you after you have formulated your protocol you should uh, report your protocol or the draft your protocol seeing those prisma guideline and then you can publish your protocol also like main time you see that people publish their protocol so if you publish your protocol it will have two advantages and because then it will be peer reviewed by submission and getting this uh, you can get the peer review of this protocol it will be modified it will be published and there can be another advantage if you don't want it to be published then again what you can do you can get it done through any expert also so not necessarily that you will get this uh, through the publication you can get this through uh, many experts also so i think dr shoptik has asked one question i i i could not see that okay so prospero is like ctra of a systematic review yes uh, you can say that and then uh, by this your protocol is publicly available so your that processes are transparent to every other person and you see that in prospero it's very uh, it's very transparent like you can also see who all are the other people who are doing the systematic review on the similar topic uh, then you formulate the topic now coming to the uh, now after this this we have talked about the initial process so once you go from here after attending this five day workshop what will you do you will form a review team or a research team you will talk to them and you will form a group of those people and then you start working on the research question so the research question will be generated by generally it is generated by the principal lead person or you can get the opinion of the other people also so now comes the next one which is the formulation of the topic how to decide like dr haldar as arpan haldar has asked how to decide for a topic in anatomy so how to do that so dr debashis is asking is prospero needed for spoke scoping review so for scoping review i said that you don't need a uh, prospero registration but generally they say that you can register it on the open science framework there is a platform which is known as the osf this is again a registering body so if you register again they see there are advantages of registration so you also get to know who all are working and again you don't need to duplicate the work which is already like being done since the uh, i will show you that prospero registration we registered for our topic in 2022 but we got delayed we could not do the systematic review and meta analysis because of a lot of reasons so before our paper got published i think two three one or two people who got, who got their protocol registered after ourselves they published it before hand before than us so yes there's no harm like there's no rat race like who is publishing first or second but again if you have registered for something if you like conduct it on time that's a beneficial so osf or the open science framework is a platform where you can register your scoping review so now coming to the formulation of the topic so how to like dr arpan has asked how to if like see i am very new many of you many of you have not done any systematic review and meta analysis and i am very confused from where i should start so how should i start so for that there are ways to do that so first is you can first is like you can identify the existing gap like we say it for the original research also we start with finding the gap in the existing literature and then we try to fill that gap so first is like it depends on my area of interest so like if i like to work in maternal and child health maybe i will start something in the maternal and child health papers related to maternal and child health i will look at the conclusion and i'll see what are the limitations 
so like of that systematic review so like for this example you can see here this is one review article this is a review article okay uh, uh, which is a systematic review and meta analysis of a randomized control trial of effect of metformin on polycystic ovary syndrome so you can see that now if you see this uh, green highlighted portion here the author have written that the uh, current research the therapeutic effect of metformin is still controversial especially for the overweight so that's why he has done his study on the overweight patients now you can see here he has written that in future studies the further evaluation should be made regarding the if you see this the in the future study the further attention should be paid to the effect of metformin doses and the intervention time so maybe if you plan to conduct a study on the same topic you can add like the dose of metformin and when they have started the metformin the intervention time so and conclusion also he has written that more rct with the rigorous research design so maybe in this case he might be having less of rct so maybe more rct like we say with the number of subjects because if the number of subjects in your studies are less studies less then the power is less similarly in your meta analysis if the number of studies is less then your generalizability is less and many time you cannot perform the meta analysis so you want to have more patients and you want to evaluate risk factors also so this is the gap you can find out and you can do the research or i mean systematic review and meta analysis in general women like here in the they have done it on overweight maybe i want to do it in the normal weight patients on the normal bmi so this is how you can find out the gap uh, then you can see uh, from the if you don't have like if you are still confused regarding your subject of interest then what you can do you can see the recent reviews last two year or last one year or last five years depending on uh, depending upon your choice and you can see the conclusion and limitations like this is the cochrane library interface you can see if you browse this you can see there are topics here so if you see this is the cochrane topic and they have if you click this drop down menu it has got a list of topics so you can see allergy methodology neonatal neurology pain public health reproductive health skin and all those things and you can search so like if my interest is of public health i can click on this public health and i can see like prevention of injuries food supply access and all those things are there and then similarly you can find uh, dr arpan from i think from anatomy also you can see uh, these uh, topic it will be there okay so i think dr chatra has asked something uh, can i see the chat box uh, yes dr ananya is writing definitely we can do i will answer the both this question if you write anatomy i do not get it then you can see i think uh, in the uh, not in if you don't get in cochrane you can just see in the uh, published literature then you will definitely find it and i know i think uh, we will send you few topics which people from uh, anatomy department here at aims patna they have done it maybe through that you can get some idea regarding that and then dr chatra is asking what is the minimum number of studies already someone has done it minimum number of studies needed to conduct systematic review so uh, there is no minimum number minimum number means at least you, you uh, the topic this is more relevant when we talk about the research question that's why we say that your research question should not be too broad or too narrow because if it is too narrow then the number of study will be very less and uh, this i think there is no guideline for the minimum number of studies to conduct a systematic review but definitely the cochrane has given the guideline for the for the uh, formulation of research question it should not be very broad or very narrow and if you keep your research question like in optimum level then definitely you can get at least 5 to 7 or probably 10 25 we have seen many uh, studies also in the systematic review and we have seen like less uh, exact number i i, I think uh, i have not seen anywhere any guideline which says that uh, minimum number of study should be there as a systematic review 
again we will look into this question dr chatra probably if somebody but i think cochrane has not given any guideline for this minimum number of study dr ananya has uh, written can we conduct a same topic meta analysis if already someone has done it recently yes you can do it because uh, the studies newer studies uh, they keep on getting added and uh, you can uh, again search uh, if somebody has done it with one database because there are limitations many people they do it with two database so if you have got this freedom you can uh, use more than two like three or four databases the number of studies will be more and you can definitely do again uh, Yes, madam, it's in PubMed, but not in Cochrane. Yes, maybe Dr. Arpan. Dr. Saptik is writing, all evidence must not be RCT, like rare topic. Yes, definitely. You can do systematic review uh, for the observational study. That you define which type of study are you going to take. Observational, there are systematic reviews of observational studies also. Not necessarily always a RCT. So now this is how you can see your topic. And you can find your basically Cochrane is like why do you don't why you don't find in Cochrane because it's basically for the evidence based medicine for clinical decision making. So probably I don't know uh, how much that uh, knowledge of anatomy will help in public health. This I mean clinical health decision making. Probably that's why they have not included it. But again, you can do it uh, as a part of a learn uh, you know as a, as a research uh, uh, experience. And in this, there is an option of new search. So you can uh, see like uh, the last three months or six months or nine months or last year. So you can see and you can find, see like what are the topics which are currently uh, getting attention from the Cochrane. So this is how you can see here, the person has done one systematic review on the school-based physical activity program for promoting the physical activity and fitness in children and adolescent age six to 18 years. So if you see the this uh, discussion, they have said that the one limitation of this update is like we explored the impact of only at the immediate post-intervention time due to the wide heterogeneity or in the follow-up time across interventions. So again, this is one limitation. So you can see again, like new people have added something new literature and you can take this as a gap, this limitation, and you can again uh, conduct a systematic review. So this is how you can find out so the first approach was depending on your subject of interest, you can find out. The second, you can see the Cochrane database or you can see the PubMed or any other database regarding the systematic review and meta-analysis last one or two years. And you can see like what is uh, in these days, like what are the topic where the people are doing more of a systematic review. The second is to uh, formulate a question from your clinical or practical problems. Like in day-to-day -day time, whatever you people are feeling or seeing, like one example is uh, if, if all of us like treat the patients of cold or common cold, and then we write antibiotic also many times. So how much this antibiotic, uh, they are very commonly prescribed in viral infections. And despite the guideline that there's no need, uh, there's a diagnostic uncertainty, but there are patient expectations and if there are no diagnostic protocol, then definitely there are many people who are uh, doing uh, and giving the antibiotic therapy even in viral infections. So if like I, as a researcher, if I have seen like what is the evidence in this case, so I can do a systematic review and meta-analysis on this uh, in, where the intervention will be a clinical decision support tool. So there are many tools available like there are SOPs, there are guidelines, there are apps of this antibiotic uh, guideline when and when not to give. So if this is my uh, intervention, uh, so I can use this as a part of intervention and I can form a systematic review review question where my review question can be like in adult presenting with viral respiratory infections, which is the population, uh, do clinical decision support tool, which is the intervention compared to the usual care without decision supporting tool, which is the comparison group. We will see this PICOT, but I think all of you know what is PICOT. P stands for the population of your study. I is the intervention. In case of an intervention study, if it is an observational study, then this I is replaced by exposure, which is the E. And then there is a comparison group, which is the standard treatment or no treatment or placebo. 
and then outcome is like uh, reduce the rate of inappropriate antibiotic prescription so this can be one of the review question if i am facing this problem in day to day life so with my own experience i can do a systematic review and meta analysis and the second approach with like and i can talk with people who are practicing in the clinical science like many time you know that one of your friend or colleague is working in medicine or gynae and they are confused with one or the other clinical decision making or some ambiguity in the guideline seeing the various types of studies because one study we will learn more about this in the meta analysis but one study is saying that it is not effective the other study is saying this is effective so how to decide like whether a particular treatment is effective or not in that case this meta analysis is very helpful because it pool the result and then you can see and it helps you in the clinical decision making so if like uh, main time you will see like for giving the i think one of the person is also from a physiotherapy so like in physiotherapy many people they come with a problem of backache and backache whether you should advise the strengthening exercise or the stretching exercise if that is not clear and there is ambiguity in that you can again the debate could be like the practitioners engaged in the real world uh, they find that there is a problem with the prescription of which type of exercise they should give so now you can formulate a research question like in adults with a chronic low back pain which is the population do strengthening exercise because this is my intervention as compared to stretching because stretching is like the standard method of exercise which they prescribe it lead to the greater improvement in pain reduction and functional mobility or not so this is the review question and third approach you can start away with the spico form if some population you are more interested like uh, you can see you are interested in geriatric or in the children group or in the maternal health and some what interventions like uh, in day to day practice if you see something and uh, you just define on the basis of this spico framework and then you decide about a research question without conducting a uh, like maybe expert consultation or without reviewing also so these are some of the example like if you are interested in children then you can see like children with asthma or adults with hypertension or elderly patient with arthritis this can be my population the intervention can be like use of probiotics in case of a children if i am interested in diarrhea or dietary interventions for obesity or yoga for the anxiety reduction and then i can choose a comparison it can be a placebo it can be a no treatment although no treatment and placebo these days it's not uh, ethical so generally we give the standard method of treatment along with the newer treatment and then you can define about the outcome so uh, if we are brainstorming basically uh, purely uh, based upon our understanding then uh, again we might come up with the research question which we think that should uh, that should be explored so this uh, again this uh, is based on this pico format like we know that like if my child is suffering from obesity i can see that this childhood obesity and this is only for the initial pico remember you have to refine this many times so this is only the initial uh, topic of interest or initial pico formulation like childhood uh, uh, obesity Uh, whether these dietary interventions like if you uh, make them on low calorie diet or the type of diet if you change whether uh, it it has got in effect of re reduction of bmi or not or weight loss or not so this you can formulate review question like in children with obesity does a mediterranean diet compared to a standard low fat diet lead to a greater weight loss among long term or a long term maintenance or not so uh, this is how you can decide for a type of review question in your case so the uh, what we find appropriate you can go to the cochrane and you can see what are the systematic review which is uh, right now there in their list and then you can find out the gap or you can decide any topic which is of your interest or again talking to your clinician friends uh, this is how you can decide so it is often said that you know uh, this you can see like far better an approximate answer to the right question which is often way than an exact answer to the wrong question if you see uh, the cochrane they they always say that if you have formulated the question very rightly even if a vague answer is there that is okay but if you have formulated a question in a wrong manner and you get a right answer or exact answer then it is not of any help 
So this emphasizes the value of a good research question or a good review question. Then uh, what are the uh, way? Uh, now you can see like from the uh, just grossly, if you see any study, the study might look very similar, but the study might differ in many ways. Like one study, if you select the patient population, there is a wide heterogeneity in the patient population. The, it might differ in case of inclusion and exclusion criteria. Like you can see the, with the uh, systematic review, the topic which we will be doing, that is the probiotic and um, this diarrhea. You can see that uh, the inclusion criteria, they, one in one case, you can find that there is only RCT. So you can have like inclusion criteria of population, like you can only take children or you can take children and adolescent both. A dollar exclusion criteria, again, you can decide whether are you going to take immunocompromised people or not, because there can be children who are suffering from chronic diseases or like extreme uh, degree of malnutrition is there. So the response of probiotic in case of a normal child and in case of an immunocompromised child will be, again, it will not be the same. So are you going to exclude those kids? And again, the exposure might or the intervention might be different the dose will be different in case of a probiotic. One person has used lactobacillus, the other person has used the bacillus. The dose can be different. Like one person has used 10 to the power 4 CFU, other person has used 10 to the power 6 CFU. The timing might be different. One person is using uh, it in the no within 24 hours, the other may have started like after 48 hours or something. So the study might differ in all these aspects. The control group might be changed. One person is using the ORS, the other person is using vitamin pills. The management protocol may be say, different. And the outcome definition also will be different of each study. In one study, you can see like they have taken the follow-up uh, like mean duration of diarrhea. And the one person has taken maybe the a cause, uh, you know, dehydration or the level of dehydration. The other person might have taken like the hospital stay or the duration of hospital stay. So the outcome is also different. So even if the topic or the research question is same, you will see the study will differ in all these parameter. And then the quality of design and execution will also be different. Analysis will be different. Somebody has done it in the mean duration. Somebody has done it in the proportion of people who got, you know, uh, that diarrhea, this thing, episode, uh, they came out of that episode and now there is no more stool uh, frequency has come down from 3 to 1 or something like that. So the study might differ on these parameter. Now, uh, please read these two questions and tell your uh, opinion regarding the narrow or broadness of the question. Yes, so the first question is, what is the effect of probiotics on gastrointestinal health in children? And the second question is, what is the effect of lactobacillus rhamnosus on reducing the duration? Yes. Which is a broad question and which is a narrow? Can you show me the chat? So one is broad and two is narrow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, very nice. One is very broad and two is very. So can you, can someone tell me why, why you have, why you are saying it is broad and why you are saying it is narrow? So in that case, you can see like person has written only probiotics and gastrointestinal health. Now definition of gastrointestinal health is very broad. Yes. And two is very specific. I am only seeing the lactobacillus rhamnosus and I am only taking the children under five. Yes. So we will see the advantages and disadvantages of a very broad versus very narrow question. So in systematic review, your question should be in midway of between these two. Your question should not be very broad and it should not be very narrow also. We will see the reason why. So a balanced question you can like ask like what is the effect of probiotic interventions on the mean duration of diarrhea and related outcome. I'm not only saying the one outcome because there if I take only one outcome, again, the number of studies, because one, I think Chatra has asked like the, is there any minimum number of studies being in, uh, which you should include in the systematic review? The answer will come from the straight away from your research question. And we always say that the research question which you formulate, 
that should not be very narrow or very broad. So why? Because if the question is very narrow, then what will happen? You will not get many studies. If your question is something like that, the second one, then the number of studies might be very limited because you have uh, like put limitations on on this intervention where, where, where it is only lactobacillus rhamnosens. You have put the uh, limitation on the only the outcome, which is the duration of acute diarrhea. And you have put the limitation in the population, which is only the under five. So you have put limitation on these three things. So then the number of studies will be very less. And then again, <clears throat> it will be like a subgroup analysis. And then the wide applicability of that pooled uh, finding will not be there. Coming to the first question, which is very broad. What is the bro problem of this very broad study? You will have a lot of studies in your systematic review. Means like initial screening, you will have thousands and thousands of study. Then it will be very difficult for you to manage that. Means because you have to do the review process, you have to screen the article, you have to extract the data. It will be very, very difficult to manage the project if your question is very broad. Again, in this case, since you have taken so many criteria, because gastrointestinal, when you define gastrointestinal health, a lot of studies will be included in your systematic review. Then you will be comparing the oranges with the apple. And generally in systematic review, it is said that this is one of the limitation that you should not compare the orange with the apple. You should compare apple with apple and orange with orange. So there will be too many heterogeneity, too much of heterogeneity means the study will be very di very much diverse in nature and it will be very difficult for you to manage that much burden of study. So that's why it should not, and the applicability also, it will not be very much applicable. So selecting a appropriate research question means it should not be very broad. It should not be very narrow. Again, I'll tell you the topic we have also, I think we have shared that article with you people that air pollution and ADHD. We have selected a very broad question because we have selected ADHD. That was okay. But air pollution has got ambient air pollution. It has got too many parameters. Like it has got NO2, SO2, PM 2.5, PM 10, and then there will uh, organic and there will uh, the black carbon. So like we were like we got exhausted. It took so much of our time and the number of article initially it were so huge that it was difficult for us to manage. So that we learned that the research question should not be very broad, like the mistake which we did and it should not be very narrow. So I hope this thing is clear regarding the how much broad your research question should be. Any outcome. generally outcome should not be too many means you can restrict up till like two or three, not too many. You can have like in systematic review, again, you can define your primary and secondary outcome. Like we define our primary and secondary objective. But remember, in original research also, we say that you should not have too many objectives. You should not have many primary and many secondary objectives. So there's no guideline as such. But if you see and read the systematic reviews, which are there in the Cochrane, and otherwise also in the other database like PubMed and the other journals, then you will see that it is not very broad and outcome Yes, definitely they go for like two, three, four outcomes, depending on the outcome, which they receive from the journal or which they see in the literature. Okay. So now, now uh, there are stages in framing of research question. So we have first define our, we have to define our research question and we have to refine our research question. So this the definition of research question should be before protocol submission. And once you define, then you have to refine also. We'll see what are these two stages in framing the research question. So like we know there is a PICOT. So this P is for the population, I is for the intervention and exposure, C is for the comparison. So like uh, what I have started with, like I am taking the population children under five years with acute diarrhea. Intervention, I am taking the probiotic supplements. So I'm not specifically saying that it is only lactobacillus. Whatever probiotic supplement is there, I'll take. 
the comparison group i will take placebo or no but probiotic and outcome i can see the effect of result on the duration of frequency or the diarrhea episode and this is the question which you people have there, there in your protocol which you people i i hope you have gone through that so in case of a re, defining your research question it starts with population so i have to see like what are the specific conditions so i will have my inclusion criteria of diagnosis of that diarrhea like children aged 1 to 5 year with acute diarrhea and the diagnosis should be based on at least three liquid stool with 24 within 24 hour based on who criteria now coming to the intervention component intervention can be you, you should know what are, what are the a uh, timing of exposure what are the route of administration probiotic was administered orally or any other route is there what was the dose what was the duration of therapy and then like timing you can decide like you will include those studies which have administered the probiotic within 24 hours of diarrhea through oral route and at least 5 billion cfu per day and duration at least they have taken the uh, this probiotic for 5 consecutive days so this you have to define in the intervention so these interventions you are going to take in the comparison also you, you have to write that you are you will uh, take all the comparison group which is there as a placebo or as a standard therapy or if there is a no treatment now coming to the uh, this uh, comparison element in case of a diarrhea you can have a comparison element of placebo where the participants received a vitamin pill pill instead of a probiotic and as a standard therapy you can uh, take the person or the children who have got the ors used in both the group dr arpan is asking in um, any anatomical structure variation what will be the control group you can only do as a observational study it is not always necessary that like uh, you can see one person they did in the prevalence you can do a meta analysis of only prevalence not necessarily a randomized control trial are you getting my point you can have the effect size can be in the form of many thing even the prevalence is a effect size so always control group is not needed now coming to criteria of defining outcome so outcome it is very important you have you should have a clear cut definition of outcome why because i said that there are multiple people in your team so as a lead if you lay down these criteria it will be very helpful for the other person to screen the article so criteria a clear criteria should be there what outcome you are going to have in your uh, protocol and you should have that unpublished data also unpublished data means many time you should see some thesis or some gray literature to see uh, what are the various outcome the people have reported so what do i mean by saying this that for formulation of protocol also you need to review literature because before that you cannot have these uh, guidelines or the criteria in place so now if you have defined your research question now you have to refine your research question now there are two terms defining and refining so first you define and then at that stage maybe you can go ahead with the search and the protocol submission you get your protocol registered with the prospero and then the refining the uh, cochrane says that before protocol submission you should do the refining of the research question also but what we have seen like what we did we have submitted the protocol and then we refined our search question once we have started including the study means the started at the screening stage so it depends but whatever is the process you need to write that in your methodology how you have done it so in the refining of the research question you have to explicitly mention like how the disease condition or the population criteria that was defined like i have said that in case of this topic like probiotic and diarrhea the specific diagnostic criteria of diarrhea would be according to who guideline and most important characteristics of the participant 
so you have to see like regarding their comorbidities the children again i said regarding the whether are you going going to take the chronic diarrhea or not are you going to take persistent diarrhea or not and if you are saying acute diarrhea what definition of acute diarrhea you are going to define what are the other demographic factors like gender are you going to take both male and female or only one gender or a specific ethnicity what are the setting of your study will be will you include only hospital based study or are you going to include the community based study also or who should make the diagnosis uh, has the diagnosis been made by like in case of a adhd we have included the diagnosis made by the parents by the teacher they have also there is a uh, criteria like they also rate so who is making the diagnosis that is also important now are there other type of people to exclude like i said about the immuno deficient if the children is having immuno deficiencies are you going to include those studies or is there any subgroup or subset analysis is done like the patient with the chronic diarrhea are you going to exclude those study where they have done it on the chronic diarrhea or not and in diarrhea also you have to define whether it is acute watery diarrhea or it is antibiotic associated diarrhea or osmotic diarrhea you know there are a lot of type of diarrhea also so you have to define each and every term and in the participants also you have to define like children uh, with underlying immuno deficiency disorder you are going to exclude that and diagnosis you have to get it confirmed by a healthcare professionals so in case of a uh, this research question of an uh, that outcome of a research question there are basically five elements and you have to define all these five elements so the first element is domain so what will be the domain of my outcome it will be the diarrhea now what is the specific measurement tool i am going to use so i may use the stool frequency count or i may use there is a bristol stool scale so i may use that also as a outcome and specific matrix like i want to see from the baseline to the after administering the probiotic so what is the change or the reduction in stool frequency or reduction in the score of the bristol stool scale again what was the method of aggregation whether was it a mean or a median so was it a mean reduction in diarrhea episode per day across participants and that outcome have been assessed at which time point like 24 hours 3 hours 7 days post treatment or what so these i need to have in my research question as a refinement because if you have refined these thing this will set the precedence for the inclusion and exclusion criteria of the studies to be included in the systematic review now many expert they say that in pico you should have this t and s also so t is the timing like we have just seen like timing of the intervention when are you going to uh, like which study are you going to include the studies which has uh, done the outcome assessment after 7 days or after 14 days or both or any time in setting also you need to have like uh, are you going to take the speciality clinic or ipd setting or community setting or a primary care setting so after you have done this research question you have to develop your protocol and this protocol like i said there is a prisma p which is the protocol for the prisma this is the reporting guideline for the protocol and then like cochrane say that you have to collaborate with inf information specialist so what is the information st specialist generally it is a librarian in of a specialist in the systematic review but in india generally you will not find any information specialist so you have to conduct this activity also of searching the study from the various database and you can use those two references which we have shown initially the chapter 6 of cochrane handbook and you have to include the research the search protocol also and a very important is you have to keep on documenting each and everything that is very important and we'll see in the search also you should make a day wise log every day because it's a long process i said like 9 months to 2 year depending on the research topic so if you don't write and don't keep a log uh, you will forget many thing in between and you will forget what change you have made and it will have a lot of confusion in your systematic review process so the lead researcher 
should maintain all the logs and all the discussions meetings which has been held with the review team you should have those minutes if you change any decision of inclusion or exclusion criteria you should document and you should update on the prospero also uh, regarding the same this is the prisma p checklist for the uh, protocol you can see the preferred reporting format for systematic review and meta analysis for a this is a uh, you can see uh, they have got like title and registration process authors amendments how many amendments has been done the sources sponsors and all those things now we will start with the uh, review question for the uh, the uh, free text searching so till now what we have discussed how to formulate and refine your question so before that i think let me show you the prospero registration uh, if you uh, put that in prospero registration so this is you can go to this site and you can log in so since i have already i have my account so with this account i will log in so you can see here my prospero so if you go to my prosper you can see like we re registered for one of the meta analysis systematic review which was the economic and non economic empowerment of women for reducing intimate partner violence we got this registered way back in 2021 but we could not do it now we have registered this and if you click on this you can show you can see here what are the different domain so this you can change also like i said like you can keep on updating so if you see the version i'll show you okay if the other person can see the version uh here you can see i have entered here like these are the review members and their organizations two changes if you click on do these like two changes we have made out we have included two authors here so that's why two changes you can see here and then again searches and all search strategies you can see initially we have just a uh, listed like what are the databases which we are going to include and again in the protocol you can start with anything like even if you have committed that you will do one or two database let like you plan to include more you can write in that change thing so you can change this also and keep on updating this okay and uh, this is how you can do the registration this is the interface so you can see the current is like completed and published so similarly you can do this registration in the prospero and if you like want to see regarding the other they have got like how to register this also and if you if you want to search like if i want to see who all have done the uh, this uh, adhd and air pollution then i can or probiotics like yes if probiotics and diarrhea who all have done so just as a broad search i can see you can see like registered one person has done it in 2011 and review status also it's writing like review completed and published one person has done lactose free formula probiotic supplementation so regarding your topic also like dr arpan was saying you can go to prospero and you can type any random thing also and you can see like if somebody has random is not that random definitely you are going to have something in your mind and regarding that picot format you can see what other people are doing and it shows like whether they are doing or they are not doing also so it all these you can see review is ongoing um right now you can see 
here it is writing review ongoing but this person i think he must have stopped in between so many like you you see many time what we do we register we get ourselves registered but we could not do so this was like one they you can see like they have registered in 2014 but after 10 year also if they have not if it's writing review ongoing that means they have not i think is there any way of saying like we are not in a plan to do it anymore oh. so you can update also like uh, if you don't plan to do it like they should have updated that they are now now not mm -hmm. doing it review ongoing so i think nobody has written there they have left in between one person has written okay. review completed not published okay so this is regarding the prospero so till now any query then i think we can have a 5 minutes break and then we'll start with the search searching the database like formulation of a concept and formulation of a search a basic search strategy any question you can have a, those of you who want to uh, who wants to have a 5 minutes break we are here only but you guys can go and come back and period for the systematic reviews like like in the in the so you know um prioritize and register already registered study it be more than 10 years they are carrying out the study so is there any like in between can we initiate a new you know search similar to that uh, can you repeat your question i, I could not uh, hear you properly okay i was just asking you ma'am any time period you know to time frame yeah i don't think so if the person has not you know when they are you know, they are you know they just serve one study and uh not many you know um, outcomes of such publications or yeah maybe they have started with like i also said about my uh, about ourselves like we also here you can see there uh, this thing i'll show about they must have not updated that let me they may have published it already no it depends many time they don't publish also you see If you, you want to start similar studies, you know, if you want to start similar systematic reviews, then it no, no, you can, you can. They don't deny, not at all. You can do. They don't deny. You can register. They don't say that you cannot do, right? So you mm -hmm. can definitely uh, do it, even if the topic is already there in this list. They don't say that you cannot do it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. anybody else like uh, dr vijay kumar is ob database includes other database like imbase medline okay sessions will be uploaded in the website which we can access later yes dr soptik it will be uploaded it will be there in the youtube also of uh, youtube link of merit india also and it will be there on the website also so uh, we are having a all i think already 2 3 minutes have gone so 5 minutes break and then we'll come back at 355 
Yes, so I hope we all are back. So the review now there is an activity. First, I will demonstrate and then you have to do it in the, uh, I think, yes, there is a breakout room. So you have to do it in the breakout room. So review question for my act, like, there are two activities. One I will do and the other that is probiotic and diarrhea you have to do. So I will show it on the review question, which is the review question is the what is the association between the exposure to fine particulate matter, which is the PM 2.5 and the development or the exacerbation of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder symptoms in children. So if this is my review question. Now, first, I will identify the key concepts. So, again, key concepts or the broad concepts are the concepts which you identify from your review question. And then you select keywords to be included in your search strategy. And that is the free text search. So, we will see how to do that.
so population here it is the children intervention since it is not a intervention it is an observational study so it was the exposure to pm 2.5 the comparison is low or no exposure of pm 2.5 outcome is the development or the exacerbation of the adhd symptom and timing is not specified but you can write the timing based on the available studies like early childhood or the till 18 year of age or something like that this is the template and this template you can see here first using the free text we are populating this concept 1 column concept 2 column concept 3 and concept 4 depending on the number of concepts which we have so generally for this review question i have three concepts first is the pm 2.5 or the fine particulate matter second is the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and third is the children so now i have to populate this so what how should i start it once i have formulated my review question second step is to identify the key concepts and after i identify my key concepts i have to search for the free text terms synonym or keywords in the selected databases the choice of database now again there is one question like what all databases should i use so it depends on the availability since we have uh, at, our, at our institute it's the medline through ovid and again medline is there for through pubmed also so you can search the medline the second if you have got access to embase you can search embase you can search web of science and you can search like for the free text you can you should search the google scholar and simple google also so i'll show you how to do that so right now i am not formulating a research strategy i am only search strategy i am only deriving the free text so what i'll do i'll go to my pubmed account so i think all of you have created your pubmed so this is uh, you can see i'll go to this pubmed let me once you open your pubmed since i have my account so it is showing with dr pragya k and you can you should also have your account i think most of you will have your account must be having your account on the pubmed so you can see in pubmed there are two uh, this is for the basic search this white box and this is for the advanced search this one we are not going to use advanced search for selecting the free text so what i'll do i'll only write like pm 2.5 and adhd and children or child whatever so i will put this search so i can see there are 10 results so i'll keep on searching the what are the different words the various research researcher they have used for this so if i like just click this and see the abstract and title so they have written a review on the mechanism between the different factors and occurrence of autism and adhd so if i come i can see like they are writing neurodevelopmental disorder and they are writing like autism and the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder so for adhd i can again write one neuro it is again a neurodevelopmental disorder so what i can do this is my microsoft word document where i have written my three concepts pm 2.5 adhd and children so i find one word which is the neurodevelopmental disorder so i will write this and initially you should make a exhaustive list we will see later how to refine that so ne neurodevelopmental disorder again i'll go to this pubmed where i was searching and i'll see like what they have written so in this case if i go down they have written like air pollutant pm 2.5 so what i can write in pm 2.5 i can again write air pollutant so here i will write 
in the PM 2.5 as air pollutant. Then again, I'll go and see there are mesh terms. Mesh, it's the the full form is the medical subject heading. So at the end of each abstract, you can so you can see like quickly you can go through this abstract. You can come down and see have they cited some mesh term or not. So in this case, they have not. So I'll go to the next result, which is the second one. So you can go from this tab. Again, the impact of air pollution on central nervous system. This is the title. If I see the abstract, they have written like uh, between the air pollution and neurodevelopmental disorder, no new term. Here you can see PM 2.5. They, they, here they have written like particulate matter. So one term which I can write is the, for the PM 2.5 is the particulate matter. So I have written, so this I am just identifying the various terms which the researcher, various research, researcher have used in the various database. And again here they have written ADHD, no new term for ADHD. You can come down and you can see the mesh term. So here you can see the mesh term, air pollutants or the air pollution. This they have written here also they have written like child or the child behavior. So I can go again here in the database here in children I can write like child and I can again write like child behavior. Child behavior will be maybe probably is the ADHD under this or you can write here the children also. Here in case of a neurodevelopmental disorder in case here I have added they have written the air pollution. So I can write air pollution, which you can see here. This one. This air pollution, air pollutant. So this, this was one. Now I will again see the third article. Air pollution and neuropsychological development. In this case, you can also see the any systematic review or meta-analysis. If it is, it has already been done, you can select the key terms from that particular research also. From particular, because all the systematic review and meta-analysis, they give a supplement file. So if somebody has done a systematic review, you will find a supplement file of that supplement uh, of that systematic review. You can go through that supplement file also for search of these terms, whether it is a controlled vocabulary, which is the mesh term or a keyword, which you can find in the free text. Again, I will see here, you can see it is again a meta analysis. So they have written fine particulate matter. So you can write that. I can just copy from here and I can paste it here. I think it, they have written fine part. They have not written particulate matter, fine particulate matter. I have added that. Similarly, here they have written ASD, nitrogen oxide. No, they have not. Here, if you uh, go down and if you see the mesh term, if they have, they have again writing air pollutants, air pollutant. And again, other because since here attention deficit disorder with hyperactivity. So this you can... All right, attention deficit disorder with hyperactivity. So I can copy this and I can paste this in ADHD. It is the, okay, they have, it has taken that uh, URL along with this. So I, I have to write attention deficit disorder with hyperactivity. So this, this, uh, this is the process and you will keep on populating. So I have just shown you with the three articles and the four you will see these articles like uh, next, uh, keep on doing the next and see. Uh, but you have to do currently in the basic search like air pollutants, ADHD, medication you can see. Next also you can see. Here also you can see. Here you can see they are writing attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So this you can write here. ADHD, the full form is the 
you can write here although we have written attention deficit hyperactivity disorder now after you have done with your uh, this pubmed do that in the google search also so i'll go to the google scholar and i'll type again the same i will open this and i will write pm 2.5 and adhd and then i can see like this is one uh, study like pm 2.5 exposure you can click this so they have write they have written pm 2.5 and incident attention deficit oblique hyperactivity so how they have written the same thing you can copy attention deficit this thing again you can paste it but they have written uh, after this oblique oblique means either this or hyperactivity here they have written oblique it's not and okay this i missed here you can see they have written attention this dash deficit so you can write here attention dash deficit similarly you can go to next this is the differential this is again there is a systematic review and meta analysis you can see the search strategy of this article also and you can include the terms this is again the uh, causal effect of pm 2.5 neuropsychotic but how they have writing the pm 2.5 so it is again 2.5 pm 2.5 exposure so you can write like 2 pm 2.5 that if you write that also pm 2.5 this you can write here like pm 2.5 so you search for the in the google scholar also and then you search in the google also so if you if i go back and search in the google plain google so you can write like pm 2.5 and adhd again you can see what are the various terms so pm 2.5 in again it is writing like attention dash deficit oblique hyperactivity disorder the way we have just written and again you can see these article this is one article okay this is the same article again you come down this is this they are writing again similarly attention dash dash deficit differential pattern of association between pm 2.5 this is again you can open and see also this is again association between the exposure to particulate matter so how you just have to see title abstract exposure to particulate matter air pollution so this you can paste it here particulate matter maybe this you can refine later with this paint option you can change from wherever you are copying it and then again you can see here they are writing early childhood so they are using this time this term child so child you are you can write children early childhood and you can paint this with a similar so this is how you can keep on populating again if you have got other database other database means like we have got ovid and we have got embase so i'll show you with embase also so embase this is the embase subscription which we have taken we have requested from the embase to uh, give the uh, link for uh, one uh, for one day like one day, i think for uh, five day webinar uh, and the work it is not a webinar sorry workshop so this is uh, i will show you since beginning so when you open the embase
so this is the uh, there are two uh, you can see there are two windows here it is the broad search and the like mesh in the m base you can see there is something known as the m tree m tree is the controlled we call it these terms as a controlled vocabulary what is a controlled vocabulary in pubmed or in medline generally what is a medline medline is the database of the article and pubmed is the search engine so through pubmed you can also go to the medline and through ovid also you can go to the medline but ovid is the paid uh, subscription generally library like our library we have got this we go to the medline through ovid ovid sp uh, which uh, is again a we ultimately you are searching the medline so what is a mesh mesh is the medical subject heading which is the controlled vocabulary whenever they index any article they use these controlled vocabulary for indexing of the article so in medline they use mesh but in m base they use the term which is the m tree so in m tree you can search for these term and you can populate like i can go here and search for the uh, what are the various terms so here what i will do i can click this m tree and i can search here let's say air pollution so if i write air pollution you can see it is a term it is a m tree term so i will use this air pollution and then you can see it will give you synonym for air pollution so you can copy all these synonym it is like aerial pollution aerogenic pollution air contamination air born pollution atmospheric and there is a option of copy so i can do i can just copy this and i can paste these terms here in the air pollution so these all got populated right ye these all have added with or 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 because they you know that similar concepts we add with or that is the boolean operator so it has taken the term or or you can remove this why because when we are going to use that in the pubmed because this initial whatever you have developed this initially that you have to search in the pubmed also so you can write also or you can copy and make the format the way the upper part is there similarly this is for the imbase imbase for the other concept if i am writing only pm 2.5 because suppose if my article i just want pm 2.5 so i will search in it is like use particulate matter 2.5 so i can click that and i can see the synonym so synonym are like fine particulate matter this is more applicable for me because mine is not air pollution let like it is very specific which is the pm 2.5 so you can see you have to keep on like because if you copy everything and then paste then it takes is it as in the form of or so you can like keep on Uh, writing uh, the thing there in the uh, this pop keep on populating this and adding the same so this is regarding m base how you are going to do it in the m base you select the m tree type the term in m tree m tree is the controlled vocabulary for this m base and this we are not telling you to search article now okay please remember we are only ask we are only telling you how to draft a search term initially once you draft a search term exhaustive list then you apply the search term in each database and you have to keep this uh, like similar that means a uniform pattern this search term you are going to search the same term for all from all the database you will not keep on changing the terms from database to database okay so this is regarding m base now there is another uh, database which is the ovid so ovid is like since uh, there is a subscription i don't know it is saying that it is not going to you have three failed attempt since it will run only on my this thing na uh, library i need to change this i will show you after the breakout room activity because i need to log in through my uh, aims patna or uh, this website so i will show you later now i have i will show you 
the complete which I have populated. So this is my probably the completed uh, terms which I have included in my initial search. So you can see I have written these many free text or the keywords for the PM 2.5. This is for the ADHD and these many terms like children, early childhood, preschool, pediatric, adult children in the children. So these are the three concepts and I have populated the search terms for these three concepts. Have you understood how to do this? Any query? I, I'm not sure. You can do it through Web of Science also. But uh, let's first uh, discuss this. And let's do like the you do one activity. And then again, I will show you more in the advanced search. So before beginning, let me show you once on the uh, Web of Science also. Why to leave that? Just a sec. So you can see this Web of Science. And here also you can search and write so you can see like for probiotic these terms are there so those of you who have got the access of uh, these databases you can keep on exploring okay so now i think uh, we will go back to the this one i have searched this and i have populated this so now there is a breakout room activity for you people and you have to search the free text term for the probiotic and diarrhea activity. So there are instructions for you people. So Google Sheet has been shared with you people. And there, there are breakout, there are I think 10 breakout room. And you all the breakout room need to develop a... Okay, participants are less, so probably five breakout room. So the review question is like, what is the effect of probiotic interventions on the mean duration of diarrhea? and related outcome in children with acute diarrhea and population is children with acute diarrhea intervention is probiotic comparison is no treatment and outcome is the uh, me, uh, this mean duration of diarrhea and related outcome so you have to populate the free text term like synonym the similar term or the variations in the appropriate column and one breakout one room will report like one i will show you the google sheet so this is the if i, I click on the instructions on the first page you can see these instructions which are which were there on the ppt you have to derive the key concepts based on pico like what is the population what is the intervention and what is the outcome so depending on that like we have shown you for the adhd and air pollution and you have to populate the free text terms like you can think of like rep uh, replacing or giving word gastroenteritis for diarrhea or intestinal infection for diarrhea and you have to like you can see room one there are various sheet so concept you have to write concept one two three and four so this is like separate sheet is there for each room so you need to populate the free text term in your respective room and what you can do like there are people to mentor but in all the room there will be a lead person think that he is the lead person of a systematic review and there will be one record keeper who will keep on populating and other people will suggest. Okay. So similarly, all the rooms should have one lead person and one record keeper and then others will help in populating these free text term. Is it clear this activity? Sheet has been shared to you on WhatsApp group. You can download the sheet and you can. So, uh, yes, it's a Google sheet. So you need to open it. I think uh, any, any other question before we go to the breakout room? 